Hello everyone, uh, thanks for watching this video. Uh, my name is Nick and uh, I've been making some custom Eurorack panels for for quite a while. I also make PCBs, design some of my own Eurorack modules, I make cutting boards, I make tables sometimes, and custom mechanical keyboards way too much of the time, among other things. After designing these panels enough, I've um, sort of developed my own system uh, for doing it. I did end up posting some of my uh, designs for Eurorack panels for mutable instruments modules on um, Reddit, and uh, people seem to enjoy them. I also included a link to my GitHub page down in the description, which has all the panel files uh, for download. This is constantly being updated and I do have some more coming. So first things first, let's talk about some of the programs that you're going to need. First of all, KiCad, which you can download. Uh, just look up, up on Google. We're going to be using PCB New mostly for this sort of stuff, as well as the, some other pieces, but we'll talk about that later. Um, I also use Front Panel Designer, which is also easily searchable and findable. Just download it from the website and you'll be good to go. Next is going to be Inkscape, which I believe is a Mac exclusive app. I'm not 100% sure, but there's uh, other Windows equivalents out there. I think you could probably do most of this with Microsoft Paint. Next up is a program called GIMP, which we will use for a couple different things. So let's start out by deciding what module we're going to design a panel for. Um, I've done a lot of the Mutable Instruments DIY um, clones because they're super fun and the modules are absolutely awesome. So I'm a big fan of mutable instruments so um, I decided that I would make panels for all the uh, DIY mutable instruments modules that I have, uh, have um, built. And um, one reason for starting with the mutable instruments modules is because everything is open source so you can find uh, info on the panels and the software and everything as, as you probably know. Um, so let's start out by first going to the uh, Mutable Instruments GitHub site. And as you can see here, um, pretty easy website to find. Most of you probably already know about this. Um, but here is a list of all of the modules that Mutable Instruments makes. So just decide which one you want to do. Um, today we are going to do a, um, a shades panel which is a good first panel to do, I think. It's pretty simple. There's not a lot of text or anything on it, so it's a good starting module to design a panel for. So go ahead and click on the Shades folder. Uh, click on Panel and click on Shades.ai, which is the um, Adobe Illustrator file. Then just go ahead and click Download. So now go ahead and open up Inkscape and then open the Adobe Illustrator file that you just downloaded. Now we have a nice picture of our uh, panel outline here. Um, you can separate the graphics as you can see from the video there. Uh, I'm going to erase those and just stick with the outline right now, which is going to be super helpful as you'll see moving forward. Next up here is going to be saving this outline to PDF form. Um, just watch the screen here for a second because um, you want to make sure that you uh, you add the right um, resolution, which you should um, put to 300 dpi. See where my mouse pointer is there, um, and that'll give you um, adequate outlines when we import this into our next program, Front Panel Designer. Okay, now here we are opening Front Panel Designer. First thing we're going to do is start a new project. So go to File New. Um, Front Panel Designer has a cool feature where you can actually tell it what panel size you want via um, the normal Eurorack standard. So you do the 19 inch partial uh, front panel. We're going to go with the height of 3U and a HP of 6. And this will give you a, a solid foundation for your panel. Um, you have to put in a thickness, but it doesn't matter here because you're not actually going to order this panel. So we'll put the thickness in and hit OK. Now here's your uh, the basis of your panel here which should be pretty close to the size of the panel that you want to make. 
at this point. So do you remember that PDF that we just created? Um, somehow I skipped this when I was doing the video, but um, if you look up above the panel there, you're going to see an A and then like a squiggly line. Right to the right of that is what looks like, kind of like a picture. You're going to click on that. and That's how you're going to import a uh, image into Front Panel Designer. Um, after clicking on that, you should see this, and then you're going to click Import and go ahead and find that um, PDF that you created earlier of the outline of the panel. Click OK. So now you have this nice outline that you can hopefully, if everything has been sized correctly, you can lay right on top of the base of your panel here, the foundation of your panel. And if everything turns out OK, then uh, everything should line up. I like to zoom way in, um, try to line the edges up to um, the edges, make everything as perfect as possible. So I'm just going to sort of fast forward through this part, me kind of screwing around here, trying to get this lined up perfectly uh, to satisfy my OCD. And now uh, here I am trying to be all fancy, you know, measuring stuff, taking notes, um, you know, really just trying to go the extra mile here um, until I realized that, uh, or I, I should say I remembered something. And that uh, special time saving thing that I remembered, you can see here in the video where my mouse is pointing there, that's uh, the screen you see if you double click on your uh, image outline that you um, imported and it'll tell you the exact size of the image uh, from there double click on your background and just put that information right in and uh, from there you should be good to go to line this whole thing up and that saves you a lot of time and energy and frustration and also just keep in mind that um, there are standard sizes for your rack panels and um, the PCBs so just make sure that uh, whatever size panel that you are um, that you're making, you know, corresponds with the uh, standard sizes for the Eurac panels. Um, the the height for three U is somewhere around one hundred and twenty eight point five millimeters. So as long as you're within that format, um, the height is typically going to be the same. So you just have to worry about the width of the panel. So everything looks pretty well lined up. So um, let's move on and start putting some mounting holes on the panel. So I just want to clarify something really quickly so it's not confusing. Um, moving forward in this video, when I'm placing mounting holes, you're going to see me pull some from the right-hand side of the screen, which is my saved library of drill holes that I've created. Um, it's, it's really simple to do so. Um, your first time, what you're going to do is just click on the little circular icon there in the top menu bar um, and that'll allow you to create one of these drill holes and then you just simply double click on it and you can resize it to the size that you need so I didn't actually show that process but it's pretty easy. This may be the part of the video when somebody asks why do you import your outline of your panel into front panel designer why don't you just put it into PCB new and use that as your basis for your um, panel creation and there's a few reasons for that and I'll explain why. Uh, first of all, when we look at the outline of, of the panels that are um, that we save to PDF, um, the, the drill holes uh, are sort of exactly the size that they need to be. Um, and, and I like to give the PCB manufacturer some leeway. So what I do is, it, uh, you'll see um, in the video there, I'm lining up the holes that I made with the holes on the panel, but I make the the size of the drill holes enough to sort of encompass the whole red circle. Um, that gives a little bit of leeway, so um, I'd rather have them be a little bit too big than to be too small and not be able to fit your potentiometer in or your or your jack. Technically you could do this in PCB new if you just upload your outline to the edge cuts layer um, on PCB new, which we'll, um, we'll go over. But uh, I still prefer to do it this way. Um, and the other reason is because if you see the um, 
the plus signs in the middle of, of my drill holes there. Uh, when I export this, I do one export that has those reference uh, plus signs because that marks the center of the hole. Um, and that's really helpful when you go into PCB new because then you, you have a, a good reference point as a center. So if you want to put a number, you know, um, labeling an input or an output, you want to get it right centered, having those um, plus signs there uh, really, really helps. It saves me a lot of time. And here in the video, I just grabbed a uh, circular drill hole by clicking that icon up top there and sized it appropriately. Uh, double click on it and then put the size in. Sometimes it's um, trial and error. So I think I started with 3.5 millimeters. It was a little too big. Then I went to 3.25. That was a little too big. So then I sized it down to 3.2 and it fits per my uh, standards. Okay, now time has passed and we have lined up all of our holes here. So we have the start of what is a good looking panel. So now what you're going to do is you're going to um, save this. So once you get to this point, just make some folders or locations where you want to save these files. We're going to save it in a few different ways. The first way, we're just going to save the front panel designer file. Just name it, put it in the folder that you want. And next, we're actually going to export this to a couple different files here. Um, the first one you'll see I'm naming it as shades with references. Just click yes, because you want to save those reference points on this one. Make sure you click yes there. And I should clarify that by reference points, I mean those little plus signs that are marking the center of your drill holes. Now we're going to export this again, and we're just going to name it shades panel without reference. And then when you click save, this menu comes up again and click no on this one. Bear with me and I promise that this will make sense. Okay, great. So that's part one. Um, we went from deciding what panel we were going to make to um, having a great basis and outline for our panel that is accurate in size and has um, accurately sized and placed drill holes. And this is what you're going to build your entire panel on. So it's important that this is all precise and accurate and uh, doing it this way ensures that. So uh, the next video is going to be uh, moving to KiCad. We're going to move everything into KiCad. We're going to um, work on um, creating the actual panel um, that will eventually be produced. I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone who watched this video and made it all the way through to the end. I really do hope it was helpful and interesting. I have some continuations to this video in the works right now, uh, which include the process of actually creating the panel, putting the labels on it, customizing it, um, as well as getting it uh, uploaded to your PCB manufacturer of choice. So um, if there's enough interest in this topic in these videos, I'll certainly get the um, remaining parts up and uploaded as soon as possible. Thanks again.